Hello and welcome to my review of SOKP, which stands for Sonic Open King Project. This is Android 4.4.4. .4. Let me change the theme here right quick uh, to give you a better visual. Let's do something. Just kind of go ahead and get that going there. So now we have that transparent background going on, make it a little bit easier for you to see. Here we go, see, Sonic Developer here, Sonic Open King Project, Android 4.4.4, tested on the LG G2 D800. This is using the stock kernel from Audio God, which is the one that they're using. And as you can see, this is the uh, 714 build. One thing I want to say about this ROM is it reminds me of Dirty Unicorns a lot. It is packed full of features, and that's a, a good thing you know, for the end user. If there's a feature that you've seen in another ROM that you may have thought about using, um, or you, that you thought was pretty cool and you wanted to try out, you're likely to find it here. At least I did. Um, all their settings are in the same place as you saw here, SOKP control. So all the things that you can customize in the ROM, I should say not settings, but all the things you can customize in the ROM are located here. Audio FX is for a widget. Um, I kind of like the one that's in the OnePlus One ROM a little better. Uh, you got your Dolby Digital here. Okay, not a whole lot there. Uh, SOKP statistics. Here we go. Status bar. Got your battery icon options over here. Got your clock and date options. This is all pretty much your standard affair. Brightness control, show notifications, double tap to sleep on the status bar. Works no problem. Breathing SMS, uh, and these are checked because I was earlier having problems getting the expanded desktop to work, and I will tell you how I fixed it. Um, here we go, quick settings. You got your quick pull down. You got the same things you're used to seeing here. You got this floating window here option. You can tick it if you'd like to. Uh, so if they're, well, you know what that is. Anyways, keep going, quick setting style, same change your rows and number of tiles you see there, sound modes for when you hit the sound in the uh, quick, quick settings notification panel. Notification settings, here's your style, you can have custom backgrounds, you got your auto close behavior, smart pull down, okay, so we'll say, there you go. Brightness slider, you have a brightness slider in your notification drawer. Pretty useful, but I'm very used to the clean look on my ASP ROMs. Here you have a customer carrier, custom carrier label, high carrier label, show Wi-Fi, network time, I'm sorry, network name, swipe to switch detection, uh, show in drawer, enable notification reminder, and we continue on down here. You got your notification shortcuts. You've got your home. Notification shortcuts is that I believe is that ribbon uh, power button. I'm sorry, power menu. buttons, recent apps panel, recent RAM bar, identicons, if you have uh, contacts without pictures, it'll put a little uh, icon for them, it's, uh, it's nifty, you can change how this looks and uh, it's, it's also very nice. Sound packs, so that's an Omni-ROM feature found in some other ROMs too. LCD density, I did change through there, so I did not have to use text droider, so it's there, it's easy to find. Suspend actions, okay. I did not mess with suspend actions, I didn't from the need to. Uh, screen recorder, this does work, I didn't have any issues. I did check to see if it was gonna crash on me, it did not. I did use the wake clock blocker here, as I'm a fan of. Um, I got some interesting results off of that, though. We will discuss those later when we go through our battery tests. System app remover. This does work, and I did use it to try and remove an app also in the uh, effort to save battery. You got your GPS optimizer. Weather. This is uh, useful. I do use this. As you can see, there it is. It's tiny. It's small, but it's there. You can have the weather uh, forecast up there if you wanted to, but again, I like clean. So this, to me, worked out rather well to be able to get access to it anywhere without having to go to your home screen. Gesture Anywhere. This also worked uh, surprisingly well. Um, 
um, I shouldn't say surprisingly, Just Training War has been in other apps or other ROMs before, and it does work. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's there. App Bar, again, I'm not a huge fan because I like App Circle Bar, which does work, and I have had great success with it. I like it. I think that it contributes to one-hand usability of the phone, and when you've got a screen this size, one-hand usability is nice. All right. Continuing on, you've got your included apps. Uh, you got your lock screen notifications here. These do work. All right. I play with the settings for both keeping pocket mode on, keeping it off, uh, wake on notification. I, I mean, in my testing, active display. I uh, did use that for maybe an hour. Again, I'm not a big fan of active display unless you have an amyloid display, but that is preference. Halo, I did use Halo. Halo does work, no problem. Hover worked, again, no problem. I'm a bigger fan of the heads up method and I've been using heads up and using heads up during this video review. Here you go, you got your driving mode. I did not test driving mode, I'm not going to lie to you. Navigation bar, here you go, and you can rearrange, and it comes with the Android L uh, icons down there, so that's nice, and it comes that way. There's no thing you need to enable to get them. CRT animation, toast animation, uh, custom system notifications, IME animations, list view animations, uh, let's view interpolator. So there you go. These are the settings that you can customize. And of course, you are already familiar with the CyanogenMod theme engine. It is the new one I showed to you earlier, and it does work. So let's talk about other things that do work and that might not work very well with this ROM. It is rather fluid. Uh, I am pretty impressed with the speed. I did get to slow down a couple times, um, but I'm learning that that's kind of the thing with these uh, 4.2. Point two sources, the jelly bean sources. Um, honestly, I do understand the argument and how difficult it is to upgrade to the KitKat sources, but uh, these little things keep cropping up in these ROMs. The only one I didn't encounter a lot of issues with was the OnePlus One, but I still was able to make that one to, to get a little choppy in your scroll, uh, just not as often as I have, or as easily as I have in uh, these ROMs here. Uh, the last couple that I've tested on the jelly bean sources. The modem, it does work well. Um, and this is actually the KitKat modem that's been uh, adjusted to work for AOSP based ROMs and uh, there's no problems with it. I will say the proximity sensor does seem to have some issues when you're taking the phone away from your ear. So when you pull it away from your ear, it does not seem to want to uh, turn the phone back on. This is also a common problem, so nothing surprising there. Let's go to the form here. This is the form you'll see on the last one I posted in this form. Oh, nope, I'm not. Somebody else did post in there about uh, some feature requests. Um, but here's your scrolling. I mean, it seems like it's working pretty good right now. Again, give it some time, keep using it. It does get warm fast, I will say that. Uh, this this, this uh, ROM in particular, doing simple things. Reading. I use Flipboard or I use Pulse. And reading my news, it did seem to get rather warm pretty quickly. And of course, uh, as, as most do, it did get pretty hot while playing Candy Crush. It did hit the thermal throttle as well. Netflix works great. I did not have a green lines issue on Netflix. However, some video played over um, the internet when you go to large screen, full screen, only some video uh, had some green lining on the border, two of the borders. I tested the same videos on my LG G pad and that's using CyanogenMod by Infected and did not have those same lines. So, and it's using Chrome browser. So I have to believe that it is something going on there that it can't quite figure out. Not a big deal, it's just a little annoying because you see it. If you're a perfectionist, you'll see it. Other than that, uh, tethering did work. RAM usage is rather nice. Uh, did not have any issues with the RAM usage. It seems like it hovers and stays pretty close to um, uh, between 800 megs to 1.2 gigs. Art and Dalvik though, as you'll see here, I am currently on Art. Uh, only because I'm not going to be on this ROM long enough for me to even care to switch back to Dalvik. Uh, I've had some problems with art, with battery life, and uh, every time the phone reboots, it optimizes 59 apps and it takes a while and again contributes to heat. Not a big fan. In fact, I love the boot animation, but I'm not going to show it to you because I have to sit here and wait for it to finish doing the app optimizations. Um, I will say I do really do like the uh, boot animation, but I'm also a fan of creativity and the dragon and the way that it spins around. It's pretty nice where they've done it there. Double tap to sleep works just fine and double tap to wake on the uh, lock screen. That works, but when I switch to art, 
I had to go into the settings and re-enable it. So just be aware of that when you switch to R, you have to go into your settings, re-enable the double tap to sleep from the lock screen. Okay, and that is in your lock screen options. I did use the Google Play for this, uh, Google Play camera for this uh, review, so I'm not going to show you any pictures because if you want to see how the Google Play camera performs, it performs just like it always has um, since this latest update. Check my Mighty ROM review. I will and am planning on going back and trying to do some uh, in depth reviews on different cameras, um, but that is for a later date to come. All right, benchmarks and uh, battery life. We're going to start off here real quick. This is shortly after I installed the ROM. I let it settle down and uh, I was hitting some pretty high temperatures, uh, really doing nothing, which was kind of surprising. And I, I sat here and watched the uh, Core Zero jump with the Core 2 and 3 and 1 and then they all go all the way to the max and come back down. Wasn't sure what was going on there, but it was, uh, the phone wasn't really doing anything for a while and then that happened. So here we go. You have your uh, benchmark out of the box on Dalvik. Of course, again, this is giving it time to settle. 32,280, a pretty respectable score. As you can see, it just barely falls shy of the G2 stock. That's very impressive. There you go again, 32,280, and I don't know what that's all about. Uh, continuing on here, this is a battery drain test. This is the first one I will say I have not been impressed with the battery life on this ROM. And uh, if you see down here, it says it's been awake the whole time, but I'll show you in my screen captures that's not the case. It's just having some issues reporting battery life. And if you check out where it says charging, nowhere is it green, but somewhere in there had a problem figuring out the battery because there's a little spike there. So again, it's having a problem accurately reporting on the battery. So where I'm getting at here is this might not be as accurate as it should be. And there were cases where the phone rebooted and it missed out on some of the beginning uh, screen life, but again, we'll get there. Four hours, one minute of screen on time. We still had 14% uh, left. Uh, I have a feeling that I wouldn't have made another half an hour, maybe. Here are your wake clocks here. Again, I spent most of my time trying to troubleshoot and getting these to work. This was an example I was sending to the um, form where the expanded desktop did not work initially, and I'll show where I had it enabled. It still didn't work. What I ultimately had to do was to actually, and I'll go ahead and, and go in there right now, is eventually, here we go, go into settings, add a scroll down here, and when I went to display and lights, all of a sudden it just worked. I didn't change a thing in there. All I did was go in there and open it up, and literally it started working. So, um, I have a feeling it has to do with how it communicates with the settings itself. Here's a Let's see here. Well, that was another example showing that the phone does indeed deep sleep, even though it shows that it's not. Another battery life thing here. This is overnight, and this is showing um, that we had some really good 0% uh, battery life lost overnight, 6 hours and 4 minutes. I do wake up to the night and turn the phone on, check emails and screens. I have a hard time sleeping, but whatever. And here we go again. 6 hours, 32 minutes, 15 seconds off the battery. Uh, 1 hour and 38 minutes of screen on time. Those are my wake clocks. And that's my next haircut. Just kidding. Uh, here we go. Another battery drain test. 22 hours and 13 minutes, 30 seconds off the charger. 26% battery life left. And 2 hours and 50 minutes of screen on time. So we're just about to 3 hours and we're at 26%. I think we may make it to 4, but that would be stretching it. And this is unusual. Again, I started trying to uh, to figure out what was waking up the phone, blocking those things from waking up the phone, and this is what I ended up with. And curiously enough, this is the only time I ended up with these uh, really odd looking stats, but there they are. Another battery drain test, 13 hours, 23 minutes off the charger. Uh, weather seemed for some reason to be pinging pretty high here. Um, I'm not 100% certain. I did disable from the, uh, I did get rid of the clock widget from the lock screen. So again, some more troubleshooting occurred here. 14% battery life left. You can see the drain there. And if you look down here, you'll see my screen on time. And you'll see the screen was off for a while, but still has some pretty good drain. That's the weather. Three hours and 40 minutes of screen on time. So still not terrible if you think about the fact that we had 14% um, left. But I'm thinking again, I might get four hours and 20 minutes. Here's your wake locks. One hour and 22 minutes of Google services. So, another battery drain test. 10 hours, 
32 minutes, 57 seconds off the charger. You can see I was testing it overnight to see how well it would drain, and it did pretty good overnight. One hour, 51 minutes of screen on time. It has 62% battery left, and only had an hour and 51 minutes of screen on time. Again, here are my weight clocks. Android Keep. I actually used the built-in app remover to get rid of Android Keep and to see if I could uh, rectify these weight clocks or the battery drain. Uh, this gave me back an hour of screen on time. For some reason, the phone rebooted and it reset the stats. You can see it's not starting from 100%. I had at least an hour of screen on time before. So we are looking at three hours and 45 minutes of screen on time. So this is actually a pretty good battery drain test. And uh, these are the wake locks. <clears throat> this is your benchmark on ART, 33,932. So you do get a performance increase on ART, as you'd expect. And the numbers aren't that much different. I think you're looking at uh, 14, 1,500, maybe more. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, so 32.2 to 33.9. So yeah, pretty decent speed bump. All right, so this ROM is brought to us by Adi Shatai. I'm sure I'm butchering that name, and I apologize in advance. Um, but uh, I wanted to show you that this might not, this project here, the Sonic Open Cane project, might be at its end. They are having some issues paying for their server, and they are asking for funds. Um, I will say that I hope that they do continue because when we have competition, everybody wins, and when we have selection, everybody wins. And the more ROMs that you have to choose from, the better off you'll be. And I'll honestly, if they can get the kinks worked out, get this, honestly, in my opinion, on the KitKat sources and uh, iron out a few of these um, random reboots uh, that I had with Chrome. Um, it's really not a bad ROM. I'm sure that they update the sources uh, and optimize a few things. You'll get much better battery life as well um, and just better performance in general. And I hope to see that. A2DP worked great. Text messages worked over sync, so the system was able to handle those for me with the map service as well as A2DP audio going streaming. You get the quality you've come to expect from Bluetooth and it shares the metadata on both my Ford Touch and Kia Uvo. Obviously the only thing that didn't work on Kia Uvo is the text messaging because I still have yet to find a ROM that works with that and um, I don't think it ever will happen, but I'll keep mentioning it. If you have a problem, please run a Logcat. Um, I have mentioned this in my other videos before. I beat it to death, but it's not that hard to do. I use an app called Syslog. Here it is. You simply open it, grant it permissions, tell it to run all logs, name it, take log, download it to your phone, and then it gives you the option to upload it. I uploaded to Dropbox and I share that link in the form so the developer can take a look at what may have caused my issues. The form, as I showed you earlier, is not that long. There's no reason why you can't do some searching. Uh, in fact, let me go ahead and tell you, it's only 199 posts. That's pretty short. Um, there's no reason why you can't read the last few pages. Um, please give it a try. Um, if you'd like it, donate to these guys. Um, I do not work for them by any means. Obviously, you should know that by now. But I do like the uh, ability to have options and selections on what you're going to install on your phone. I think everybody wins, again, like I said. Um, and this is a pretty feature-filled ROM. It really reminds me of Dirty Unicorns a lot. And uh, I can recommend it. Uh, you might have less problems than I had, but keep in mind, I test all my ROMs with the same apps. And uh, if I've added anything different, usually I comment about it. Um, that I did not add anything different to this one. And uh, hopefully some of those those kinks, those issues, do get worked out and this ROM continues to develop and become better because it is pretty nice. In conclusion, if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, please ask. I'll uh, be more than glad to answer. If you uh, look at any of my other videos, you see that if I might not answer you that day or the next day, I answer you as soon as I get a chance. Uh, I do stay at rather active but I do make it a point to try to answer all the comments within with my ability, and I do keep a baseband back up, and I will keep a baseband back up for this so that I can go back to it. Remember, if you're going to flash this, make sure you flash the either the KitKat modified modem by Dr. 87 or um, 
have the stock jelly bean modem and TZ and RPM installed on your phone uh, just for the best results with sensors and modem and working rotation because that's kind of important. Thanks again. Have a great day.